If you were to visit part of the Northwestern Railway, you will most likely see a blue tank engine part of it. You'll know this little engine to be no other than the Thomas the Tank Engine, who's proud to have a branch line all to himself. <laughs> As he watched the passengers disembark, he heard tires screeching in the distance. Before he knew it, a small yellow car pulled up next to the station. And out stepped a boy with his father. Hey, look, Daddy! It's Thomas! I can see that very well, son. Hi, Thomas! Oh, hello. How do you know my name? You have your very own book series written by a thin clergyman, and your very own TV show adapting some book series. Oh yeah, how could I forget? Well, nice to meet you, Thomas. Yes, it's nice to meet you too. Come on, Timmy, we better be going. Bye, Thomas. Later that day, it was Edward's turn to be recognized by the little boy. Man, that was a hard job. I think I'll go have a rest now. As Edward puffed into his sighting, he noticed the yellow car, and sure enough, there was the boy and his father. Look, Daddy, it's the first engine ever created. Indeed, it's a pleasure to see you, Edward. The pleasure's all mine, sir. The three chatted for a while before it was time for Edward's next train. Well, it's been nice talking to you, Edward. It's been nice speaking with you as well. Bye, Edward! That evening, the day's work was over, leaving time for the engines to gossip. Excuse me, Edward. Yes, Thomas? Did you have a little boy speak with you today? As a matter of fact, I did. Why do you ask? And Thomas told Edward about his little encounter at the station. When he had finished, Edward smiled. This year marks the 75th anniversary of the thin clergyman's books, which probably explains why that boy was so excited to see us. Okay, that makes sense. After all, I'm the main character of that TV show, and you're the first engine Audrey created. That's correct, Thomas. Hey, I just had an idea of how we can celebrate our anniversary this year. What do you have in mind? Thomas whispered his plan to Edward, who agreed to tell the Fat Controller the next morning. The next morning, Edward was shunning at Nafford Harbor when he saw the Fat Controller. Ow! Hello, Edward. Oh, hello, sir. Hey, can I talk to you about something? Of course. What do you need to talk about? And Edward told him about Thomas's anniversary plans. When he had finished, the fat controller looked rather intrigued. Sounds like an interesting idea, Edward, but what will I do about the other engines? You can showcase them with name boards, like in the TV show. That's a great idea, Edward. Thanks for telling me. By the way, you can tell Thomas his idea has been approved. Wonderful, thank you, sir. I can't wait to see the look on his face. Evening hung over the island once again, and Edward told Thomas about what the fat controller had said. Oh, this is great news, Edward. When can we go through with this? May 12th, about two months from now. Good things come to those who wait. I guess you're right. Well, better get to sleep. That branch line isn't going to run itself. Hi, Edward. Good night, Thomas. Soon the big day came. Percy and James came to see the two blue engines off. Goodbye, you two, and remember to take care of yourselves. I want you back in one piece. Don't worry, sir. We'll take care of ourselves. And buffer to buffer, the two blue engines puffed away for the big city. When Thomas and Edward arrived at the big city, they were both lined up in an airy shed, where people took photos and autographs of them. Thomas? Yes, Edward? Under all that cheekiness is a pure genius. Oh, thank you, Edward. <laughs>